Uh, good, good day to everybody. My name's Stuart Hearn. I was a hand-on yacht builder in New Zealand for close to 40 years, metal yachts, and I started my own company in 1986. Aluminium sailing yachts, aluminium mussel harvesters, and aluminium large trailer boats mainly diesel powered. So I always had an interest in building a true ocean cruising yacht that would be the ideal size to fit in between wave patterns very strong, very stiff, very safe. So with that in mind I took a, an existing design idea from a friend of mine who gave me the lines after the death of the famous British architect Robert Clark who designed a small sailboat for my friend in 1979. Subsequently the yacht was built in New Zealand by himself, an amateur and sailed from Auckland via Cape Horn to England and up into the Arctic Circle. I was really impressed with this boat um, so with that in mind I on the same sort of principles I, um, I took the design and I made her longer, wider, deeper. Now she is 13.28 meters uh, has a displacement loaded of between 8,500 and 9,000 kilos with a ballast of 3,500 kilos ballast ratio somewhere between 42 and 45 percent top size plates here 8 millimeter the mid run plate 8 the bottom 8 keel sides 10 deck 6, nose cone 6 which will make her an extremely strong boat with not as much framing in a metal boat as would normally be there because of the size of the plating. You need to remember that uh, aluminium is one third the weight of steel so normally if you were building this boat in steel you'd go four, four, five to make her as like as possible but even then you would be the equivalent of 15 um, in aluminium, 12 in aluminium, 12 in aluminium. The ideal was to design a boat that was capable of very very long ranges with carrying her own fuel. I went to the Caribbean a few years ago and tried to buy an ex-charter boat. I didn't realize they wouldn't even have enough fuel to even go a, qu a quarter of the way across the Pacific just running the generator or the engine to generate enough power to keep your electricity needs up let alone the deep freeze and whatever. So with that end in mind, with that with that uh, knowledge in mind, I thought, well, every boat I've built since had a very, very large capacity of tankage. 800 litres of fuel, sorry, 860 litres of water rather, and about 600 litres of fuel in between the two tanks. I'm not quite sure if you can see it here. Let's have a look. No. Um, no. Anyway, that uh, fuel tank is not drawn in yet. So, one thing my friend found that crossing the world and stopping at various ports in Chile, Argentina, South America, was that if you want to lean your vessel against piles or on a grid and you've got a fin keel you've got problems 
you're either going to sink into the mud or it will be very stable, unstable, propped up on the hard. So with that in mind, he said, well, you need to build a, a shorter uh, shield keel. So she carries her ballast down low, like many of the yachts do these days. So that leaves you with a shallow enough draft to, to go, say, around the Queensland coast, up rivers and such, as, and still have a very good uh, writing moment. My idea is to make this boat available to anybody who wants to build her um, amateur or professional. You can see I've got some clipper effect in the bow, and if you if you haven't got the ability to do this then I can just make a conventional um, convex sided boat. This is a belting and that there represents the boat against a pile. You can see how they work. This belting is not quite the right size, it's a bit oversized but I'll have to alter that later on. Um, my recommendation don't paint your aluminium boat take a, a random orbital sander sand the boat with about 320 grit you won't even see where it's been it all finishes up one matte grey then hit it hard with an acid wash fast foaming acid cleaner acid cleaner hose it off and then from the top down start spraying by hand spray um, you know one of these garden backpacks things it must be plastic it can't be metal so you work from the top down and you and you um, spray it with aladine use in the um, aircraft industry since the 1940s the hull will go bronze and it's a wonderful protection I do it under the water line too and then finish your painting system typically uh, 300 microns of high build epoxy dry dry film thickness when you're protecting a boat it's all about uh, film thickness you know um, and you can buy quite cheaply these combs that you push into the paint as you spray it on that read the, the thickness in microns or thousandths of an inch 25 microns to a thousandths of an inch it's a lot of paint you know you can do it in one hit 12 double header coats with a really good uh, spray gun operating from a pressure pot so I'm offering the boat the lines all the plate developments and how to cut them out and all the offsets and I'm offering also uh, to hold your hand while you're building the boat you can call me on WhatsApp or Skype anytime and I will talk you through anything right through the welding how to set up the boat because that's uh, the really, um, that's a really uh, critical thing how to set up the boat you know you've got your frames there you're building your frames off the, um, off the body plan you have um, a loft floor which is that size um, so you're making this loft floor out of particle board what it is and you draw this you get all the dimensions for the frames all the offsets now you cannot possibly build a boat with just DFX cut frames um, the cut them arrives as a package for you you still have to draw it full size on the floor like this because you've got to assemble all the components the floor and if you don't know what a floor is it's the um, piece of metal that holds the frames at the bottom together so you've got the floor the side pieces and you've got the deck beam they have to be laid out on this loft weighted down and they have to be 
welded together in a sequence so I can explain all that to you and how to set this boat up so it can be built you know usually I just um, I put a a um, piece of metal across at a particular water line it doesn't matter where it is high up in the boat like this they will go in between each frame tie them together and then under that I will put two steel girders and I will hang all the frames on this on these two longitudinal steel girders which will be um, run fore and aft yeah longitudinally and they will be supported in columns on the ground and you can hang all the frames up and build the boat the right way up first off you put the keel down and then you hang all the frames from these longitudinal beams and once it's all once it's all um, set up like that you you then put the deck on that sets the boat thwart ships and then you start with the top run which is this plate here so I'll explain all that to you and um, all I'm asking is 1500 Australian dollars for everything the plates and all their offsets and developments and how to cut them out it's a lot cheaper than getting um, cut out by DFX and you don't know what you're going to get I can I can give you these um, plate developments with the uh, offsets and you will be able to cut them out within a half a millimeter I guarantee it with just a good quality aluminium cutting blade and a, you don't need a big heavy um, hand saw just a you know 1500 watts 1300 watts they're as cheap as chips these days so there you are be in touch if you're interested thank you very much for watching